<clears throat> In Colorado, marijuana has been legal since January 1st, 2014. I was in the idyllic resort town of Aspen for a meeting, so I decided to see how the marijuana legalization thing was going. Was it going well? Was it going poorly? Were there parties where people were hanging out and trying the stuff where I could go for professional reasons? I wanted to know if legal marijuana is good public health policy, so I went straight to the top, Sheriff Joe DeSalvo. Has it punched holes in the fabric of this community? We just haven't seen it punch holes in the fabric of this community. We felt like we had more significant issues to deal with, although our significant issues are not real it significant doesn't seem like you have too compared much to, to Denver or New York City or Chicago. And I know there's a lot of people that say we will deteriorate into um, um, stoner's heaven. Um, I just don't see that happening. It sounds like marijuana stores aren't stirring up too much controversy in Aspen. The mantra around town is that if you regulate it like alcohol, everything will be fine. But there's only one way to know for sure. I had to go buy some marijuana for myself. For journalism. You can only pay in cash. They can't run a credit card service because that is run by the federal government, which does not agree that what they're doing here is legal. So that place is loaded with cash, and everyone knows that. And when the store owner leaves, they are a prime target to get, uh, you know, mugged. But I won't rob the place and hopefully nobody will uh, rob it while I'm in there. None of the marijuana stores in Aspen were cool with us filming inside. But I can tell you this, it was pretty normal. There were pro-legalization posters on the wall, bongs and pipes for sale, and a guy in the back who was pretty mellow. So I got some nuts and some candy. This is uh, Love's Oven Hot Nuts. And I know that when people write hot nuts, especially when they spell nuts with a Z, it's sort of like playfully innuendo-ish. So I'm on board with that, I understand. This is Etta Pure uh, Sweet and Sours. They look just like Sour Patch Kids, but they do come in this child-proof uh, container. Uh, I gotta wonder when kids are gonna figure this out that all you have to do is push down while you turn. After visiting the pot shop, I decided to walk around Aspen to see how marijuana culture is infiltrating the streets. I'll go back this way. This is a t-shirt shop, which is actually kind of rare. Ooh, real estate. That's what I'm looking for. Six million dollars. Property values are plummeting. It feels a little, a little strange, you know, if, if a cop decided to say, hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna search you. And they did find it on me. They'd be like, that's okay. Thanks for supporting the local economy. I talked to some people on the street who were pretty fired up over this issue. Well, I should probably forewarn you, in spite of the dreads, I'm probably the least qualified person to remark on that subject. Okay. Um, yeah, what else uh, were you thinking? That's nice. Very good. But some people aren't laughing. Ben Cord is an addiction specialist with the University of Colorado Hospitals. As we continue to normalize this and allow uh, it to get more and more entrenched inside of our culture, uh, people are going to use it younger and younger, they're going to use stronger forms of it, and they're going to use it more frequently. But I hadn't seen many problems in Aspen. Well, Aspen's paradise. You know, I don't think Aspen's really representative of anything. Ben Court says the scene in other cities is more concerning. Yeah, in Denver, the marketing towards uh, young people is just obscene. It's cartoon characters, it's uh, half-naked women, it's cartoon characters we all know and love, like uh, Fred Flintstone smoking a concentrate between two half-naked women. You know, not necessarily for the connoisseur. But the reality of what's happening today is that you've got a new vice industry springing up and following in the footsteps of other vice industries, and the one that parallels it the closest certainly is big tobacco. Sheriff Joe DeSalvo had brought up a similar point. Whenever you introduce a new product, dollar signs appear all over the place. So, um, you know, in Colorado we have definitely seen um, entrepreneurs, if you will, dumping huge amounts of money into this. 
Ben Cord is concerned that with money, big marijuana will become unregulatable. It's happening. They've got a full-time uh, K Street lobbyist in Washington, D.C. They've got a super PAC, and then of course there's, there's about 20 full-time lobbyists here in Colorado who are working against any kind of regulation. Are we moving towards a place where there's a law that you have to consume a certain amount of marijuana every year? And if you don't, you have to pay the government. <laughs> No. <laughs> That's nuts. Not even were that stupid here in America. I, I would ask people to really consider why we are being faced with this uh, such a black and white decision. You are either for full-scale commercialization and industrialization or you want to see everybody go to jail. Um, personally, I've decided to completely reject that false dichotomy and to say uh, not only do I think that there is a middle ground, but that middle ground is way better. And whether we're talking about marijuana, religion, politics, I think fringe people are dangerous. Mm -hmm. The people who are just out there using marijuana in the, just to prove a point, smoking it publicly, or then there's the people who just think it's going to ruin society, and there'll be free sex and love, and it'll. Fall. But I think the people in the middle have some real reason behind their thoughts. What's wrong with free love? <laughs> 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 Nothing. Nothing. In the end, marijuana policy was a little bit like this fountain. Not as simple as it looked. But there was one other thing on my mind. What was I going to do with 20 servings of THC? If I leave it in the hotel room, the owners could come in, think it's just candy or nuts, and take it and then uh, crash their car into a tree or a child. Now, if I throw it away, I just wasted $30. I can't sell it to a kid. I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. Uh, maybe I'll use the Sour Patch Kids to make friends. Hey guys, I have some drug candy. You, you guys want to go to hang out? I have drug candy. I don't see a problem with that. No, I, I do see a problem with it.